Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode I interview Andrew who had a cryptid encounter in Greenville, Missouri. He claims there was game wardens in the area and they were running helicopters and hog traps. He was hiking the area when he encountered a strange figure that was trying to avoid being detected. Greenville is in a very remote area of Missouri and it has had its fair share of Bigfoot encounters. Could this strange creature that was seen be a Sasquatch or possibly some other type of unknown creature? If you have had a Bigfoot encounter, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. And if you would like to support the channel, please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to comment down below. You can also support the channel by becoming a member today and gain access to my personal Bigfoot research out in the woods. Alright guys, let's dive straight into this next cryptid encounter from the Show Me State of Missouri. Andrew, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today? Oh, mighty fine, mighty fine, uh, Manuel. Uh, just living life. Andrew, you recently had an encounter where you saw a creature hide behind a tree. If you would, tell us about this encounter from the very beginning and give us every detail that you possibly can. Okay. Um, well, I was um looking for a place to run my dog he loves to i i he has so much energy he you know i just running him on a bicycle is just the thing to do you know and so i've in the mid 80s was the first time i was ever down there at greenville i was uh up visiting um from oklahoma city so i knew about old greenville the, the new town site and the old town site the state park i'd, I'd figured that out sometime in around 2017 that they'd put a big state park there because i'd moved away and everything and so i've been going out there just to uh, i'd went out there earlier in january i went out there i think it was january it was either the 14th or 15th of january saturday or sunday and i rode my bike out there uh and ran him the almost the full length of the trail it's a three and a half mile trail and then there's a little like a little half mile cutoff trail that goes off to the river in that trail the three and a half mile trail goes from the from the the old site of greenville um into greenville underneath uh, 67 highway there's a tunnel under there and so i went out there and as soon as i pulled up i started unloading my bike and after arriving i parked at the boat ramp area of the greenville um greenville state park because there were signs in the road saying state park was closed. And I thought, well, I drove two hours. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's about two hours from best. That's where I'm at now. <clears throat> and so I, I drive and I realized the parks, the, the, the park park portion is closed. I don't think too much of it because the boat ramps open. So I go to the boat ramp, I park, start gearing up because it's pretty cold. It's January. So I have a set of coveralls and, I put my coveralls on and got, you know, I, my dog was in an orange vest. Uh, my bike is orange and I'm wearing an orange construction jacket with the reflective piping. And um, also I, as a, as a, as an additional, just for fun, I throw a Bluetooth speaker on the back of my bicycle and I blare music just as loud as whatever station I want, as loud as I want, wherever I ride, because I don't care. So, and I'm sitting here thinking the whole time, like, man, the state park's closed. I don't give a shit. You don't close the state park on me. Um, my state park, I'm going to, I'm going to use it. So I jumped on my bike and I ride that entire, this is the weekend of the 14th, 15th. Um, and I ride the, I ride the trail and I thought, well, this is a fun trail. I stopped. I went, I rode the entire thing all the way into Greenville, turn around, come back. Uneventful on the weekend of the, of the 14th, 15th. Um, and then I thought, well, I'm, I'm leaving. I thought, well, shit, that was fun. It takes up an entire day. By the time you drive two hours, you hang out there for a couple hours, you turn around and come back. And plus I can stop by on my way back. I've got some property up in Marquand that I like to stop by and make sure it's still there. Um, but, um, so I went home after the 14th or 15th. I, I don't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday when I went and the same with, uh, the next week. And I don't remember if it's Saturday or Sunday, but I'm leaning towards Saturday. And I was just ready to go out there again come the weekend of the 21st. Um, I, I just loaded up my bike, got out there, did basically almost the exact same 
the same routine by filling up gas, everything that, you know, I would do normally. And as I'm driving in to Greenville State Park on the weekend of, I think it was the 15th, um, but I'm driving in and all of a sudden I have this sensation or a feeling of not time compression, but like I jump forward like 10, maybe 15 seconds in time. And I look up and I see a helicopter, a red and black McDonnell Douglas MD 500 helicopter. I know the helicopter. Well, I worked around them in the military. I know exactly what it is. It's just a civilian version. So I thought, um, oh, it's just some civilian farmer drive, you know, flying their fields, you know, flying crops, whatever. You know, I didn't put the two together, the park being closed and the helicopter until later that day. Um, if not Monday, maybe when I called in, I think it was maybe Monday when I, no, 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 no. It was later on that day. I, I figured it out because that's right. Cause I came back. Let me just fast forward back to the story. So anyway, so I have this little, um, 15 second, 10, 15 second time manipulation kind of sensation. Um, didn't pay much attention to it, saw the helicopter kind of, a kind of just ignored it for a few seconds and continued to drive. And I thought, well, that thing was low. It was, could have been anybody, anything, you know, and I park, I go put my gear on again, same gear, you know, Bluetooth speaker, orange jacket, orange vest on my dog, um, orange bike, you know, and I jump on it and I start riding in. And as I'm getting ready, though, I look over and I see two Corps of Engineer police vehicles. I used to work for the Corps of Engineers. Um, and I also saw two Missouri State um, game wardens parked. And there was at least maybe two, if not three, other pickup trucks with trailers, at least two, two side-by-side ATVs um, on those trailers. And so I, in uh, the path, if you've ever been to Greenville State Park, you know that there's a bike trail path kind of north side of the parking lot that you can kind of skirt the uh, parking lot um, and not actually get in the parking lot. And so I thought, well, since I'm going to trespass today and they're watching me, I'm going to take the farthest of the two paths, right? And it's it's actually kind of the best path. It's the most scenic path anyway. So um, I get on my bicycle, me and my dog, we ride uneventful all the way into greenville um no not a problem i ride right past them they don't even it didn't even look like they looked up at me and they may have looked up i don't know but they couldn't have not seen me wearing all that orange and with my speaker blaring so i go all the way into greenville and i hang out in greenville for 30 45 minutes i have a i have a burger and a and a chocolate dip cone for just for something to kind of snack on until i get on the road again and um, when I done when I'm done eating there, there's a I think it's called like the Midway Tap or Midway like Midway Restaurant I think is what it is. It's great food. I mean, you know, look just burgers and stuff, but it's all you know like 1950s diner style uh, food. Really good. If you're ever in the area, suggest it um, for a little treat. Anyway, so I start riding and I get across the street where the where the trail that's just on the north side of a bank parking lot. I stop on the top of that little hill. I mean, when I say hill, I only mean like four or five feet high. It's just kind of a leveled off parking area. And I go to let my dog off the leash and he's all coiled up. Like he's ready to, like he's ready to run, like he's ready to go. And I thought, well, he'll follow me. It's no problem. Um, you know, he's, you know, he won't, he don't run too far from me, but he, as soon as I let him off the leash, he just takes off. And I thought, what the hell this dog, since I've had him, he's 14 months old now. So he wasn't even a year old when this happened. And I had never seen him give me 100% when he when he was playing. Never. I mean, he's just always 60, 70%. And then this time when he took off, he's, he's running straight towards uh, 67 Highway. And I think, oh, so I start yelling for him. I, all I can imagine right now is my dog's dead. He's gone. I don't know what he's chasing, but he's – whatever it is – it was odd the way he reacted, his eyes just, it just wasn't right. I don't know what that, I didn't, I didn't know what it, why he took off. So I kind of ride down the trail just a little bit. And finally, right before it was probably 30 or 40 yards before he actually gets to 67, he turns around and comes back to me, but he's still kind of got this like wild eyed look to him. And I'm thinking, nah, I'm not going to run that risk right now. Cause being so close to 67, I put him on the leash and I continue my ride. 
And I go back to the, to the tunnel. I get back to the tunnel area, and I go maybe 15, 20 yards past the tunnel, and I let him off the leash again, thinking, well, we're on this side of the highway. He's not going to run that direction. And I probably rode maybe another 20 to 40 yards, maybe 50 yards through that, and he darts off up this hill again at that same clip, just running like he had a purpose. And I thought, he's done this before, but never with that with – that, that mad eye, like that, oh, I got to go get it, you know, kind of, kind of deal. He's, he's kind of a dumb guy, you know, he's not, he's not real brilliant. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just kind of riding kind of at a, at a fairly decent clip. I'm going pretty good and I'm yelling for him and yelling for me. There's nothing I'm saying or doing is, is helping. So I think if I just go forward, he'll try to at least pace with me and keep up with me. <clears throat> and as I look to my right, or, well, when I say right, I mean, I was looking to the left because he's kind of up high on this hill. And I looked straight ahead down the trail, and I see what I thought was a tall, very skinny person in gray, in like in just a solid gray tracksuit. I think, what the, you know, I, I'm going to, I may let, drop a few cuss words. I, I, you know, I'm pretty good at that. But um, anyway, I look and I see this thing, and it looks like. He's got a set of track, you know, the hoodie up as well with maybe even some headphones or something that kind of keep the point of his head, you know, kind of keep, kept it pointed back. And I thought, that's not right. That's nobody's head should look like that unless it's speakers, you know, like it's a headphones or something. I'm kind of weirded out. And, um, and I'm thinking at the same time, well, maybe it's just a jogger jogging downhill across the trail and then down that hill just a little bit more. It's probably seven or eight feet farther from where I saw him to the to where the ground is level again, where you get off of the slope for the, for the trail. And so as it's, as it, it runs and it's, I maybe saw three steps, maybe three steps four at the most and boom, it stops and it stops right at this tree. And mind you, I'm going at 15, 17, 18 miles an hour going down this hill, kind of yelling, waiting, you know, looking for my dog the whole, you know, kind of confused of, of what's happening. And it stops right at this tree and it takes it. And, and I remember its hands, its arms anyway, it didn't appear to have hands as much as it appeared to it's like, imagine if you had your hands out in front of you and you took your thumbs and tucked them in, in between your middle finger and your ring fingers. That's kind of what its hands look like, you know? And I thought that was odd, you know, that something was not, and then I've got a thousand things going through my mind, you know, and it stops and it takes its left hand, plants it, probably just over it's not really over its head but like right around its its um its head level plants its left hand thumb down what what would what, what would have been thumb down it just looked like he turned his palm towards me and put his hand up against the tree and then took its right hand a little bit lower like around its chin area and planted it up against the tree half a second it was there and then i think I, I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go past this. I'm not stopping. I'm just going to go past it. If it if it's something that's going to get me, it's going to get me. I got my gun. I got hopefully my dog's going to do. So. I and you know those things went through my mind real quick. But anyway, I passed this thing, and I probably don't pass it more than twenty, thirty yards. And I stopped waiting on my dog to come down the hill, and he went. He tracked almost all the way to the exact same two trees that I thought that beast or whatever it was was behind and i'm looking this whole time my dog's coming down the hill and i'm looking around trying to figure out what the hell went down that hill and there's nothing there's nothing by that tree and from the time i saw it to the time i stopped it wasn't more than three maybe four seconds and i turned to my right and i start looking down this uh in this flatter area down where it's out actually more of a swamp than, than it is anything because of the, the time of the year with all the rain, the snow melt and all that, there were a lot of puddles down there, like six, eight inch deep puddles. Maybe I know there was the next time I went back, there was big giant fish in these things. I mean, big fish. Um, cause I, I went back probably, if not the next weekend, the weekend after that as well, after I saw this, I've been back two or three times since. Um, and, and mind you this whole time, before before all this happened, I, I I would have how can I say it? 
I didn't really believe in dog man, moth man, skinny man, none of that, none of that, not whatsoever. And I barely believed in Sasquatch, fully believed in Sasquatch until October of 22, 2022, because I had just gotten back from a, a, a trip to Washington State where I used to live to visit a friend of mine who had just had a Sasquatch experience. Um, and I wanted to see this location. Um, and so let me get back to my dog man thing. But anyway, so I would have believed in Sasquatch had it not been for my buddy, Bob from Washington. Um, but then after the event, he also told me that dog man's real. So I didn't, really, and I definitely didn't believe in dog man at all. Dog man was not a, not even a, a thought in my mind. So let's go back to where I was gathering up my dog after I passed this thing and stopped. I stopped and I looked down that hill and I thought, and I knew that's too swampy. If there was anything running down that hill, it would have hit the water it would have made sound. There had been water moving. Um, it would have still been slud, you know, trudging through all this crap that's down there, you know, and there was nothing. And I'm sitting here now and my, my little pucker factor went from like, like maybe a, two, a solid two to about an eight. <laughs> I was like, Hmm, that's not right. So I load up my dog. I say load up, I leashed him up and I just, and I rode. And if you, if you know that area, you go up a little bitty hill, uh, not a hundred yards away and there's a park bench. And I stopped there. I parked my bike, you know, kind of kicked the kickstand down. I just started looking over there and listening. And I kind of hang out, hung out there for about 20 or 30 minutes. And I was thinking about this thing. And I said, that thing was just gray. Whatever it was, was solid gray. There was no, like, I couldn't make out teeth. I couldn't make out eyes. I couldn't make out any like individual fingers. I couldn't make out. Um, any facial expressions, nothing, none of that other than the general shape. And it was all filled in gray. And I started thinking since that thing disappeared, was it in some sort of transformational phase? Was it, you know, that's what I thought because it was gone. I mean, I rode past that thing. I mean, I wasn't three feet away from where it was standing when I rode past it and it was gone. Nothing I could think of was explaining, you know, what happened, that, you know, as far as human. And I, was, and I was running all this through my head up there on the hill at the park bench. And my dog was still kind of a little amped up, but not, not nearly as bad since we got away from it. And I didn't really notice any weird activity from him after, you know, getting up on that, you know, taking that little break on the side of the hill, on the <laughs> top of the hill there. And, um, Eventually, I just I, I just had to put it in the back of my mind. And, and oh, also while I'm riding uh, to top this off, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. Um, with that Bluetooth speaker, I was playing uh, tribal dr drum music, like American Indian tribal drum music, just as loud as I could play it. And um, so, some part of me at that that time was saying maybe it was the music, the park being closed. Uh, Monday, when I got back to work, I called the Corps of Engineers and found out that that helicopter was out there to do aerial hog hunt. So, kind of started putting, you know, some things together after that, like, okay, this, this is, they were out there hunting hogs, that's not, they weren't involved with this, they weren't hunting dog man, they, they, they don't, I mean, whatever this was, was not a hog, it was not a dog, it was not a human. It was not a deer. It was not a bear. And I don't think I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure it was not a Sasquatch before my um, event in October of 2022 happened. I knew from what I saw then to what I saw now, those two things could have been any more different and in, in, in different um, creatures, whatever it was. And I just don't know that uh, um, it was not in some transformational phase. Like it just disappeared. It was gone. So I sat there for 30 minutes probably and doing what I do on, on my weekends and everything. I jump back on my bike and I start riding back towards the head or back towards the park. And as I'm coming out, there's one Corps of Engineers employee that I passed or a park. He might have been just a park employee. I don't know if he's Corps of Engineers, but he said, hey, park's closed. I said, yeah, I know. That's great to know. Um, I'll see you next weekend. Kind of joking around like I'll be back. I don't care if it's closed or not. Kind of attitude and i just kept riding i rode past the uh corps of engineer police i rode past the the um the uh game wardens and all that but I, I mean i'm still on the trail about you know 50 75 yards away from them it might have even been more but um 
I just rode past those guys and just ignored them, got to my truck. And not much after, not seconds after I pulled up, this uh, little red Toyota, I think it was, might have been a Tundra, like a maroon Tundra pulls up. And a lady and I guess her boyfriend or husband start crawling out and she looks directly or she starts kind of, we're about five parking spaces apart. And she looks right over at me and she goes, Hey, what's going on? And me being me, I was like, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I, and I totally lied about my age, but I was like, well, I'm 38. I'm single. I got a nice truck. I got a good job, you know, kind of just joking around to her. And she laughed and the guy that got out of the truck, I swear to goodness, it was one of my uncles. <laughs> he looked just like one of my uncles, but he didn't say anything. So I kind of dismissed that as him being one of my uncles. And I, I was like, whoa, cause I don't seem, I got 27 aunts and uncles, um, just on one side of my family. So I, I don't know them all, <laughs> you know, but, um, well, I know them all. I just don't know them, you know, anyway. So I kind of blew that whole situation off until Monday when I heard about the hog hunting, uh, ordeal. And we've just been trying to put it together ever since. What was that? Um, and, uh, so I started doing some research on some videos and somebody had mis- mentioned Anubis, the, an Egyptian deity named Nubis is kind of what dog man resembles. And that's how I came up with dog man. Cause I was, I, I at that time before I didn't, I wasn't really for sure what it was other than it had to have been a dog man or skinny man. And I don't know enough about skinny man cause I've never researched that at all. I wouldn't know what people are saying about it. But dog man, everything I've heard that they that the people have said, other than it just being gray, has been I mean, it was just tits on. I mean, just whatever every 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 description I got of Anubis and what I saw was tits. It was just I couldn't deny it. So that's why I came up with Dog Man. That's just um that's pretty much my experience. And I'm still trying to figure it out today. Um but yeah, that's that's my experience. Okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with me. And if you would, I'm ready for some questions. What about you? I'm ready. Okay. So this happened in Greenville Park, correct? Yes, Greenville State Park. Greenville State Park. Is that in Greenville? Greenville. Is that a town? Uh, Greenville is an actual town, yes. What it is is back in the 30s or 40s, um, maybe even the twenties. I can't, I can't remember when they'd had some flooding issues. So the Corps of Engineers moved the old town of Greenville up on the hill where highway 67 is now. So it's about two or three miles away from, uh, the state park. Um, depending on how you, the, the, the trail is a little bit longer. So it's three and a half miles. So I imagine it's probably two miles to the, to the state park. Okay. Um, so, um, there has been a Bigfoot eye sighting reported on the BFRO out of Greenville, and I think it was south of 67. What makes you think it's a dog man and not a Sasquatch? Well, my experience back in October let me know that there is no way. that Because when I, what I saw crossing the road in, in Washington State, was way bigger than this thing was. This what I saw was maybe seven foot tall, seven and a half foot tall, and I thought it was so skinny. I don't think it outweighed me. I and I weigh about two fifty now, um, and I don't think it out. If it weighed three hundred pounds, I'd be surprised. Um, and it's and it seemed to have this hip, like this walk, that resembled some sort of dog, almost like the hip was in a different shape and movement and, and maybe even, and I don't really, cause like I said, it happened so fast. It's hard to say what I saw in the, in the, in the leg area, but it seemed like it just had a really odd gait to it. A real weird, like even a, a not a human style hip. So that it, it could have been like bow legged or something possibly. Just that, no, I don't think it was like any kind of deformity. It, it, mm-hmm. it seemed to have, have just a, like its leg, went through a different type of motion than what a human would. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So just, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, no, I understand. It's hard to describe something like that. Do you think they were just hunting hogs in the area or do you think they were hunting down these creatures? Uh, 
I really think they were just hunting hogs. Um, it being a problem, you know, they, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, you know, and I, in, in, I should have maybe even went over and talked to them later on after, you know, after I saw this, but you know, me sitting there going, you know what? I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need these guys looking at me like I'm crazy. People think I'm crazy anyway, you know? Um, I, I, I didn't really need their input at the time because I was just kind of miffed about everything. Um, pretty settled in my, settled in my own abilities to, to, uh, uh, diagnose my own issues or concerns. Right. And so I just went past them. I, I don't know if they were, it, it seemed like they were just hanging out, just doing what government employees do. And the civilians were just doing what they do. Uh, and when I came back, that's when the helicopter had landed. Um, that's how I put that the helicopter was with them. Okay. Um, but it was just, it was just kind of weird that, that I saw the helicopter but that little time compression, like that little 15 seconds, like as I was thinking about that later, it was like I was meant to see what I saw. Because had I not, had it been 15 seconds behind, I would have never seen that. Unless it was just attracted to my music. In this, in, and my dog also has a bell on, a big loud bear bell. Uh, so it was probably attracted to that. But when I saw it, I had no, absolutely no fear of it's definitely, you know, like it's, it's after me. There was nothing. It was just, what was that? And then I passed it, you know, kind of deal. Uh, Cause I was, I mean, well, I'm my bicycle. I can, I can cruise, you know, I mean, anybody, you know, and especially there, it's, it's almost uh, downhill in that area. Yeah, it is downhill in that area. Not much, but about four or 5% grade. Um, enough to gather up a heck, a heck of a lot of steam, you know? Yeah. Okay, so what color was the helicopter? I know you mentioned it before, but if you could go back into the details, it was red and black. Uh, I think it was, I think it was black up top and red on bottom, or vice versa. I don't, now I'm kind of, kind of going now. Now that I have to think about it, it seems like it, it seems like it was red up top and black on bottom. Yeah, that is very interesting because where I explored a past Bigfoot eye sighting area i saw a red helicopter flying around and right when i started hearing rock clacking like it was coming together we were experiencing bigfoot activity this helicopter came back from out of nowhere you know it already disappeared it came all the way back and hovered right over us right when the activity <laughs> started and it was like a red it looked like a red civilian helicopter but what i heard is that they were hunting hogs in the area and they were definitely hovering around a lot of Bigfoot research areas that I've done in the past. So mm. I think it's definitely possible that they're hunting these things down. And um, another thing is the, I don't know, there's certain BFRO guys and ex-BFRO guys that report a lot of these Bigfoot encounters. And those happen to be the places that they're running these helicopters. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I'd, I'd never heard that. Um, but yeah, it was, but it was definitely a civilian agency because they had placards on the side of their trucks too, some kind. Yeah. And a a, sign. I believe they're hunting hogs. I really do. But at the same time, if they run into one of these creatures, I believe they also have a protocol on what to do. Yeah, I, I would, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, there's, I, I know through, we're, we're not being told the whole truth. We're, we, we as a human species, I think, have de-evolved from something great. And I think they're lying to us about a lot of things out there. I think everything from the education system to just the way we do business is just, I think there's a lot of lies. I think there's people that know the truth, and they're the ones that have the power, and they're the ones that have the money to be able to be in the know. You know what I mean? Because you and I, we, we, we know what we know, but we don't know. Absolutely. You know? Our whole world is being manipulated. And it doesn't seem I like that, but when you really look down deep into it, that's how it is. I'm, I'm positive of it. And this is not something that I've been, like the whole everything's, everything's fake thing is kind of new to me. It's, it's, it pretty much started about three years ago when all these riots and stuff happened because of just the way, I mean, this can't be real, <laughs> you know, this, this isn't right. You know, we're not, 
and why the why the cover ups, why the lies, why all this? I don't. And uh, nah, it always revolves around money. But going back to the encounter, um, your dog started going nuts, and do you believe that's the reason he was going nuts? Was this creature that you encountered when you were riding your bike down the trail? I didn't think that until after I saw it. Then I knew that my dog was just. He was into something, and that was that something was gray and tall and weird. What'd the dog do, though? Did he show teeth? Did he start barking? Did he immediately run at the figure? What happened? Um, when I first started no- noticing him coiled up, um, I hadn't seen or sensed anything. He just, as soon as I let him off the leash, he bolted, and I looked up as, in the direction he was going, and I just seen cars. I assumed he was chasing the car. But... I, you know, and, and I should have probably, well, I don't, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But um, there's things I probably, you know, they're, I don't know why I didn't go back, you know, a few minutes after I discovered, or after I saw this thing and maybe look for prints, but there wouldn't have been much because all I saw was it crossing the, 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 the trail. When I say trail, it's a concrete trail. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, asphalt trail. It's not a, a, a dirt trail. So I was, you know, that's, that adheres to the speed even more, you know, because you get a lot more speed going on the on asphalt than, than dirt. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if those guys were hunting them or not, but I feel like they were hunting uh, wild hogs. And like I said, there may be a protocol. If I was up in a helicopter, I might be a little trigger happy too. So there's a lot about flying in helicopters that makes me giddy. Mm-hmm. So, so the – trails in greenville state park are all paved or was it just that one specific trail pretty much the the trail that goes in between the old city of of the old greenville city site and the new site is all paved and there's one little spur trail that uh, that's paved as well that goes off towards the river uh kind of in a southerly direction um and i don't i don't remember seeing any signs for any unpaved walking trails i don't i don't you know they usually have little trail markers or at least a trailhead sign or something uh in the area where i went i don't remember seeing any dirt trails and that's kind of why i was thinking well why was that person jogging on a trail coming down this hill you know there's no reason for it mm-hmm. you know there's, there's no trail there and then when i and i thought maybe i missed the trail but when i rode past it again i had a look and then when I stopped, I was really paying attention. I was sort of hyper alert now. And I, I looked and I was like, there's no, nothing moving down there. There's nothing running. Uh, it disappeared. It flat just went by. It just, it, I mean, when it, it looked at me and once it locked eyes with me, it just took a little step to the left and it was gone. Okay. So you can confirm this creature was upright. And can you confirm that it had fur and it wasn't human? I absolutely can confirm it was not human, but it absolutely, I I can't say if it had fur. It was just gray. It was almost like an apparition to me, like a set of gray sweat. But it didn't have clothes, right? For sure. No, no, uh -uh. it did not have clothes on. It was not a human. It was too tall, really. If it was a seven and a half foot tall human, it would (laughs) It would not have had the strange, you know, step to it, the gate, and it, I would have seen it running down that hill. I mean, it's pretty steep. It's probably at least a forty percent, fifty percent grade going down that that. Well, I won't say I'm, uh, percent of grade is like sixty a Humvee can't climb. So, like, oh, let's just say like forty percent grade. You know, forty fifty percent grade. It 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 was just. Why would you go down there as wet as it was into a swampy area? I mean, like I said, if you ever go out there, I, I you can't miss it. Within inside, you can't miss the site. Within inside 120, 150 yards before you get to the bridge, if you're leaving the old city of Greenville mm-hmm. and in you know, the park, it it happened right there. But you know, if you go out there, they'll be right before you get to the bridge, or about 150 yards maybe after before you get to the bridge on the south side of the trail, there'll be a um, a um, park bench. And then it goes downhill a little bit, and then it kind of starts to kind of go uphill towards the city of Greenville. Um, it sounds like they didn't get the creature. Maybe um, they saw you on the bike, and they reported back to um, all the people in the parking lot that they, you know, they saw something, 
And then the people you know, in the parking lot said, no, nah, it's just a guy on a bike. But really, they did see something. And they never got the creature, possibly. Maybe it got out. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, like I said, when I got, when I, after I saw it and I stopped and took a break, I went to, um, I, I, when I went back to the park, that's when I noticed the helicopter had landed. So I, maybe they landed for fuel. Maybe they landed because there was me out there in my bike. I don't know. Um, but you'd think they would put some signs up like, hey, danger, don't enter. We're shooting people <laughs> or we're shooting from the he- from helicopters, you know, something. It, that's not the signs that were out. It was just, hey, your park was, parks are all closed. Yeah, um, that is interesting. And another thing, an area that I've been researching in, in the Mark Twain, all of a sudden they started closing down the state park that's right next to the research area and running these helicopters for hog hunts. And they posted up on Facebook that this particular area will be closed and no one can go in. But it's kind of weird. It makes me feel like they're watching all these videos I put up and they pay close attention to these areas that are reported. And maybe they go in there and try to look for these things because it's their best lead. I mean, these are predators that live out in the woods, so maybe they take any information they can get. Absolutely. You know, um, you know that's, that, that's, that's absolutely how, how you would do any kind of counter informational you try to figure out everything that they're doing and thinking and and you can go back and then that's and if the government's into that kind of thing they're going to go back to the people that you may have interviewed and 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 brush them up a little bit (laughs) you know like hey you didn't really see that you know or something if that starts happening then you'll know you're right but because i think that the the people you deal with will call you and tell you if they if they get a you know a guy with a plate carrier showing up to their door in the middle of the afternoon you know so yeah, I, I I I don't doubt it. I I don't doubt one bit that our government knows more than we know. Um, and it's probably above like our local governments. Um, I'm thinking more of those governments that don't exist. You know, um, the shadow government. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, <laughs> if you do feel like this creature wasn't human. I'd be glad to maybe meet up at Greenville State Park if you wanted to do um possibly an interview. I could block or um you know blob out your face and change your voice if we need to. Well, I, I for sure have the have the face for radio, but uh you know I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd be totally for that and show you what I saw. I absolutely know this thing was not human. There's no way. I mean, one, you run into somebody that's that tall, seven and a half foot tall or so. It's it's odd. I mean, you see them, but not very often. I mean, yeah. they're seven, even at seven foot. And this thing was just seven foot, seven and a half foot, and I'm six foot four. Yeah, and for the people that don't know where this area is in Missouri, it's really remote, and there's not a whole lot of people out there. A lot of trees, and just really small towns. Yeah, it's yeah, Greenville, I don't think there's 600 people in Greenville, maybe 400 people in Greenville. Um and the nearest town to that is I would probably the nearest major town near close to Greenville is Poplar Bluff, and that's still another hour south. Um I think that's about how far that is, but yeah, I know that area. I've been coming to that, this area. My as a matter of fact, in the old Greenville State Park when I was in the mid 80s, came up from Oklahoma to visit my grandfather who lived over there in Patterson. And man, I wish I could talk to him about Sasquatch because he lived in the woods, you know, those, those older fellows, you know, but anyway, so, um, but I visited there. Uh, so I knew of the park. And then when I, when I first got out of the army, probably, well, it wasn't when I first got out, it was probably 2016, 2017. No, it would have been, no, it would have been 13 or 14 when I was, yeah, after I left North Dakota, I came down and I'd been to Greenville a few times since um, since about that time. And that's when I figured out that they had made a state park there because it used to just be all wooded. I mean, it was just all woods. Uh, my grandfather used to keep an old boat back there. It was just two old uh, truck hoods welded together with some with some bars across it. That was his canoe, his boat. I, I, I don't doubt it wasn't an old moonshining boat or something. It just you know what I mean? 
but that is, that is very remote in there. And, um, there, cause if you go on the South side of the river, there's, it's hard. It, it's really hard to access that area unless you're the, you know, you have permission. And I think there may be even some, a trail over there that you can get down to the river, but you'd have to, like I said, you'd have to know the owner. And I don't think anybody lives on that land to the South. I mean, within side of 67, I don't know that anybody lives there just because the way you go up that hill to go to towards Patterson and uh, back in there. So yeah, it's, it was a totally random thing. I wasn't going out. I haven't since, since I had my experience in Washington state with Sasquatch, a lot of shit has happened. Um, I've had, I've even, I, in, in my time, I've had probably five, maybe six UFO experiences. And I'm just now, like today, I kind of debunked my, my uh, black eyed child thing. That was, I think it was just a Mormon kid or a Christian child, like how they do. They come up to people and just start talking to them. Long story short, that may not have happened. That may have been just me freaking out internally. But, um, and I've had I've had a you um, an underwater submerged obstacle um, kind of incident in Washington State and the Bigfoot in Washington State and uh, okay. some some UFOs in Oklahoma. So okay. just, I want to hear about the Bigfoot encounter you had in Washington State, if you would go into it, please. All right, yeah. Um, back in October of last year, I had uh, I had uh, arranged a trip on a friend of mine's account of a Bigfoot. I wanted to go see this area and it's an area out in, uh, far West Washington state. Now he wouldn't like it if I gave away any of like the road names or anything like that for his experience. But let's just say it was out near hump tulips, uh, Washington. So I get out there, we go out to his spot. He's got a place out there on, um, uh now i can't think of the name of the town um he's got a little place out there near hump tulips uh so we went out there and it's just it's a camper in a little campground area it's not it's not much it's not you know but it's it's enough you know you can cook your dinners and have a nice place to sleep and warm and you're not in the rain you're not sleeping on the ground and um uh we i went out there and um to, to see his site, to see what he had saw, to see if, you know, if, if, if something else would happen. We didn't stay long. It was daylight and nothing happened. But mind you, I just went out there to see his spot. So after two, maybe three days of being out there, we headed back into uh, the um, Seattle, not Seattle, but um, Bainbridge Island area. No, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not uh, Bremerton area is about where he lives. Um, and went back to his house and was hanging out. Well, he had to work still. I'm just there visiting. So I jump in my truck, a rental, a rental truck. And I know this area over there by, um, uh, it's called Quillacine. Uh, everybody makes fun of this area. They call the people there Quillbillies, right? Um, so I wanted to go out to Quillacine and, and it's about a hour drive from his place. So I jump in the truck and I go across the hook Canal bridge uh, past Shine Beach and all that, and I go down to Quillacine, and just south of Quillacine a little bit is a um. Well, I'm sorry, that was the day after. Um, the day after is when I went to the observation points. So I would have been heading around to like Port Ludlow and uh, taking the back roads into into Port Ludlow and. I think I had headed over towards uh, Discovery Bay because of there's a place called the John Wayne Marina. I wanted to see that. So I drove all the way around to the John Wayne Marina, letting, you know, kind of did my little thing and spent maybe 45 minutes to an hour there. And I thought, well, I'm going to head down towards um, Quill Scene again. And then I, I went down into Quillacine because I knew that they had, there's a little coffee place, a little food place there. And I thought that'll be a good place to, um, you know, just kind of charge up. I got several more hours today. And so I jumped back on the highway and I started heading up to this town called Chemical. And uh, I was coming up a road. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It, it wasn't Beaver Valley. Uh, could have been Highway 19. Now I'm looking at it, so now I'm kind of second guessing myself which way I, I made it to this point. 
So either way, I go through Chimicum, uh, Chimicum, Washington. And if you know that area, there's a, just north of Chimicum, there's the Port Townsend Aero Museum. I was going to go by there because there's also a little, well, there's the Aero Museum there at the airport. So that's where I was heading. And I, there's this, where there's this intersection where you go through Chimicum and you go past the school, you go past this little farm stand and all that. And well, as I pass this park, um, I'm kind of, I, I realize that this car passes me. It's, it's a, and I remember it was a, 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 a mini, a, a Cooper, a mini Cooper, but it was one of the four door mini Coopers and it had a really odd color to it. It had like a tan stripe that went down from front to back of the car, about a foot wide, 18 inch wide stripe that went down the car. And it was like a loam green, kind of a weird sea foam loam green kind of color around that. And I thought that was a weird car. And it goes past me and I'm just driving and I look up and on the side of the road, I see something. I thought, what is, wait a second. Does somebody have a giant plywood cutout of Sasquatch in their front yard? And I'm starting to shake my head. I said, wait a second. If they've got a, a plot of that tall, probably nine, nine and a half, maybe. Well, I know it was seven foot. If it, if it was eight, I'd be surprised. It was, Somewhere taller than eight, eight, nine foot tall uh, plywood cutout. And I thought, how heavy would that have to be? What kind of frame would you have to be? And why would you put that on the in the right of way of a highway? Because that's illegal. You can't put a fence post out there, a mailbox. You know, you know, there's rules on that stuff. And as soon as I did that, as soon as I thought that, that little hunt, the uh, Mini Cooper passed another car that was coming my direction. I don't remember what the car was passing me or, you know, go in the other direction. But that Mini Cooper and that car passed each other, and right then, this nine-foot-tall, dark, thick shadow, boom, across the road. It, but when I was looking at it, I thought, holy shit, is it wearing clothes? This is close. I was thinking along the lines of, okay, it's close to um, Halloween. Could be somebody trying on an outfit, right? And it walked, and I thought, no, the arm swing, the legs, no way. This is absolutely a Sasquatch. And I start, like, I just take a deep breath. And I'm like, what the f***? And um, I, I keep driving, and I, and I know I took my foot off the gas because I know that, like, if you slam on your brakes around deer, they're going to spook and they're going to run. That's that's kind of, you know, they know that. And uh, my Uncle Dale had told me that years ago. So that's kind of what I was thinking when I just let off the gas. I was like, and I'm three quarters of a mile away from this thing, probably. And um, it passes between those cars. And I and, and at the same time, I don't see any brake lights or nothing. So I'm thinking, oh, it's it's just a cutout or something. There's no, It's nothing. And then it goes across. It, as soon as those cars pass, it went right between them. And I, and I thought, well, shit. <laughs> It looked like it was wearing shafts. And if you know what shafts are, they're, you know, do you know what shafts are? No. Okay, shafts are kind of like a, um, cowboys used to wear them on horseback a lot. Well, it looked like it was wearing shafts, but they were leather color, like brown. Like its legs from the waist down may have been brown, but from behind him, when I passed that same street, I'll tell you the name of the road because I went back the next day to figure it out. Um, as I passed that road and I looked to my right thinking I wasn't going to see anything, I saw that thing and it was walking straight down that road. And I thought, don't slam on your brakes first thing. Get turned around and come back. And, you know, with traffic being what it was and everything, I had to go a little bit farther than I wanted to to get turned around. But anyway, when I passed it and I looked to my right and I looked at it and it was walking and it was massive. It was a good four foot thick, I mean wide, big arms. And the, the swing to them was just, I mean, it wasn't overly pronounced, but it was definitely they were moving. But what caught me was, other than the color, it was just all black from behind. What caught me was almost like its hair and people are, the, the the few people, very few people I've told this. This is where they this is where they don't believe me. It looked like his hair was braided, if not cornrows, 
braided, what what do they call them, uh, cornrows, uh, weaved or whatever, mm-hmm. down to the, you could see the skin in about like two inch wide spreads on its back. It was like hair, skin, hair, skin, hair, skin. It looked like its hair, its back hair was braided. And the way it was walking, and I also thought, dude in a costume with stilts on, but that couldn't happen because I've seen people walk in stilts. You can't cover, you can't, you can't walk like that. You can't get across the road in three steps, you know, with, with stilts on. There's no way. I don't care if they're six inch stilts or they're, you know, what are they like 18 or 24 inch stilts that they use to reach ceilings and stuff like that in construction. And they're hanging drywall and doing mud and stuff like that. They, I've seen a lot of people wear stilts. This was absolutely the biggest object other than a hippopotamus or an elephant. There's nothing I've seen, nothing on two legs I'd ever seen this big. I, and I and I immediately figured thousand pounds, nine hundred to a thousand pounds, um, as big if not bigger than any elk I've ever seen. It just it just at, at the time it was just going through my mind. I'm not saying it was or not. It was just in my time. I was like, oh shit, what is this? So I get turned around and I come back to that road and I realize that finally that Mini Cooper had turned around as well. And and I didn't talk to him or anything, but I drove past that road again. And I'm not shitting you. And I'm going to tell you the name of this road. I don't care who knows, but that road (laughs) that it was walking down was called Nip Lee Road. N-I-P-L-E-E Road. Nip Lee Road. And you can look it up. Is this I, I by Mount it. Rainier? Um, it's actually no. It's probably about a good 150 miles from Mount Rainier. Um, Chimicum is out on what they would call the peninsula near Port Townsend, probably the north end of Wa- of Washington, where it, uh, the Puget Sound is up there, where Port Angeles, Squim, and uh, Port Townsend are, and all that. Well. Um, Quil, uh, Quilcene and all that I'm sorry, uh, Chimicum is south of all that um, but let me, I've got my maps up, I can probably do a real quick um, uh, let's see where is I'm just trying to get a general idea yeah. of where this all happened but yeah, yeah. Um, what did your friend encounter up there if you don't mind me asking his encounter was in a place out in this in this forest that's uh, where he hunts. He had he was camping there to hunt, uh, and he told me he didn't bring enough gun for what he thought he saw and heard. But it was basically a lot of tree shakes and tree breaks that he was hearing and vocalizations. He actually reached out to someone I I want to say the BFRO, and they sent him somebody. To interview him, and I, I don't remember the name, but he actually he's really good friends with How to Bow Hunt guy, the Steve guy, and the the How to Bow Hunt guy actually read his story over over um, on his channel, and um, so the, and I don't think he actually saw the Bigfoot, but he he just was. And if you know this guy, my friend, he he. He's he's tiny, but he's one of those guys is like if he's in the military, he would not have had a problem with anybody. He's very confident, very sure of himself, very much so would not does not need to lie in his life. There's no reason for him to need to lie in his life. He wouldn't do it. I trust him and he's the kind of guy that you could pull your heart out, hand it to him, come back a week later and it's still beaten. That's how I think of this guy. Real good guy. Salt of the earth guy. And uh, when he told me that he had a Sasquatch experience, that's when I was like, okay, Sasquatch is absolutely real. Uh, if he says it's real, then it's real. Then he, because he, he wouldn't just, you know, once he had his experience, that can, that was enough to convince me. And that's why I went back out to Washington just to see that. And, and I remember about 10 or 15 minutes before I saw my Sasquatch, I was thinking, man, that would just be so cool to see a Sasquatch today. Yeah, that's how it works. Very cool, and I appreciate you sharing that with all of us. If you would, dive into your encounter where you saw an object come out of the lake or some type of water source. 
Okay, this was a, an underwater event that I had. I was at the Hood Canal. I mind you, at this point in time in my life, I was unemployed. I just got out of the Army, so I had like, it was something like 99 weeks of unemployment. So I had a boat, and it was crabbing season. And I'm out by Port Gamble at the Hood Canal Bridge um, running my boat from the, it would be the west side and the east side. I'd let some uh, crab traps out. Two of them were my wife's. I, after we dropped our crab traps, I took her back so she could go to work. And um, I was running these crab traps uh, pretty much all day, um, trying to get enough crab for the both of us, you know. And I'd been out there the day before as well because it's a daily limit thing. So I'm, I'm running my boat. I've got a 19-foot um, uh, boat that I'm just cruising back and forth. And mind you, I'd been doing this the day before. So going going through the Hood Canal Bridge uh, from east to west, I'd been doing this, like I said, all weekend. I was heading from the west side end to the east side in this particular time, and uh, is the Salisbury Point is the is the where I launched from. It's right next to the Hood Canal Bridge. So I'm going under the Hood Canal Bridge, passing, getting just out, almost right in front of Salisbury Point Park. And I'd been, like I said, my, I had a, I have a depth meter on my, on my boat and it's going, you know, like 600, 600, 600, 300, 300, 300. It just, you know, whatever in between 600 and 300 all day long until I got to where I was dropping my crab pots anywhere in between 120 and 60 foot of water. And, um, in this particular point, there is no reason why I would go from, from, how can I put it? Let's just say I was going from west to east, and I'm going, and I know this this part of this this bridge is going 600, 600, 600, 600, and then all of a sudden, I think at that point it may be a 300, but anyway, it was going. Let's just say it was 600. It was going 600, 600, 600, and all of a sudden it goes 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. I thought, what the hell? So I turn around and I go through my wake again, and it was the same thing. 600, 600, 600, 600, 600, 600, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. 19. I think that's what is under me. It's not a whale. Um, Because whales, in any, and, I, and I estimate from the time it started saying 19, and, you know, and, and, and where it went back to 600 or, or 300, because in that area it just varies. Um, but sometime in between that, um, in that in that uh, driving, I had went. I, I drove up and down that thing probably three or four times, and it was always what I estimated to be about 300 foot long, 200, 300 feet long. And then I thought, well, let's see how wide this thing is. So I turned my boat, do a big arc, and I come across it. Well, in 600, 600, 600, 600, 19, 19, 19, boom, and then 600, 600, 600, like three beeps of of 19, and then a whole bunch of you know, going down. So I think I drove over something that was, you know, my sonar was picking it up. It was definitely pinging on something at 19 foot. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I didn't see anything. I didn't, I, and at the time I didn't, I thought, man, that, I don't know why, but I was more worried about my crabbing than I was about, um, what I saw, cause I'm, but I'm still, I put it in the back of my mind. I was like, what the hell is that? And then it was probably several weeks. And after that, I thought, man, that could have been a submarine, a Russian submarine, because that area does have American submarines come through there. But because of the military bases out there, we have Bremerton and uh, Keyport and all that that is out there. And uh, several, there's several submarine bases in the area. And, um, when they bring those submarines through there, they bring them through on the surface, but they're surrounded by a fleet of ships. And I'm talking container ships that have containers on them. So you can't see, you know, like it's an obstacle for the submarine. And then when there's, and then not only that, but they'll have like 10, 10 patrol boats that every time they see a boat that's too close, they'll run up on it and tell you to move. There was none of that this day. Um, but yeah, the Hood Canal Bridge because it opens and closes, right? Because there's a Banger Naval Base that they go to down there um, from Port from Port Gamble, Hansville. But like I said, 
there's no reason for a submarine, American submarine, to be submerged in that area. Because in that area, once you get into Port Gamble, south of Port Gamble, from that three, where it goes from 600, 600 to 300, 300, well, then it just starts getting shallower all the way to Bangor. Um, and, and so the American submarines will not be submerged in that area. I can't imagine any time other than war would they be submerged in Puget Sound in any way, shape, or form. They're, they're, they're pretty much escorted all the way from, from the naval base all the way out to, uh, um, open sea, which is out there past what that, uh, Cortez, uh, I forget what they call that area out by Cape Flattery and uh, the far Western part of Washington. So whatever it was I drove over, it was about yeah 200 to 300 foot long and about 20 foot wide. And, um, I was in that area most of the day and I didn't see nothing come out of the water or nothing, but it was definitely an, uh, an underwater submerged object that should not have been there. I can't, I can't tell you if it was a, to me, the way my radar, my sonar was working, it seemed like it was a submarine though, because I just happened to get right over the top of it. I don't know how I lucked into that, but, um, and uh, you know, now I have a lot of regrets. Like, man, if that was a Soviet submarine, why couldn't I have just taken my anchor with the chain line and about 200 foot of, well, I probably had 300, 400 foot of cable and line on the boat. Why couldn't I just drop my anchor down there and try to snag it, you know, and then call 911, tell them, hey, I'm hooked on something, <laughs> you know, because it could have been a, it could have been a national emergency. It could have been a, could have been a UFO. I don't know, but I, I can't confirm that it is a UFO and I, I can't confirm that it was a submarine. My, 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 uh, my spidey senses say submarine, but I, I you know, after I've been hearing a lot about some of these UFOs and what they're doing, I, I now I'm not for sure. No. So, yeah, yeah, very that, cool. That so, was a weird experience. <laughs> yeah. So you think the creature that you experienced in Greenville State Park just disappeared? Have you ever considered that possibly it belly crawled out of the area? Well, if it did, it would have been belly crawling down fairly steep terrain into water. I mean, because there's little tidal, not tidal pools, but, you know, the river there comes over the banks all the time. And there was a lot of, we'll just call it ponding. There was a lot of ponding going on down there. And then it opens up into a field. And I sat there for, you know, when I first stopped to, to get control of my dog, I stopped there for, you know, a good 30 seconds until he came to me because he ran right up to that tree. And then I, I had to almost force him to come to me. And I, I don't remember getting off my bike because I was, I don't remember. I do remember thinking, Oh, if this thing's going to get me, it's over. You know, but I, I knew I could stop in time, but if it was going to get me, it would have got me stopped or moving. So, um, but it didn't seem like it wanted, it didn't, I didn't get any fear from it. I didn't smell anything when I passed it. Um, do you think it was possibly attracted to the native American drum sounds you were playing? Absolutely. I think, I think that's a lot of what it was. Cause other than that, it wouldn't, other than the dog bell, they probably nothing would be attracted to it. Well, I guess certain coyotes and stuff, maybe, cause they'll know that, you know, know, know it as a food source. But I think I I think it like I said I think it came out from the Native American music like you know must have brought something out in his instinctual you know brain to like hey what is this maybe my maybe my tribal friends are back I don't know but that was that had to have been a part of it um but yeah I think the music was was a big part of it um yeah I would tend to agree. Yeah. So and then so now every time I go out, I take my I take my music and I and I'm totally unrepentant about it. If people start yelling at me, I just keep going. You know, you go through you know because I ride day or night. I mean, it's I got headlights and flashers and all that on my bike. You know, I'm not scared to ride in the dark. But I def I definitely know what I saw out there was not human. And it wasn't a Sasquatch. I don't, I don't think it could have been Sasquatch. I don't, and I think it, I honestly think it was in some kind of transformational and that goes towards the whole, you know, you got your wooers and you got your, you got your apers and I don't know what you got in dog man terms, but this thing had something about it. It disappeared. It was gone. Cause I, like I said, from where it was standing to me passing where it was standing second, if it was more than four seconds, I'd be surprised. 
I would be interested in going out there and having you stand there and seeing how far and, you know, <laughs> you know, at least somebody, I don't have a lot of people who are willing to hang out with me on the weekends, but, uh, you know, probably because of my Sasquatch sightings, but, uh, no. And, um, uh, when you, when you brought up, um, um, Mount Rainier, that brings up something that I had a UFO experience right there at the South side of Mount Rainier. That being said, I was still, let's see how many miles, roughly, um, about 70 miles from, uh, Mount Rainier Park, you know, on the computer when I can just click and, and drag, you know, about, about 70 miles from Mount Rainier is where I saw a UFO that seemed to be picking up Tic Tacs from underneath it. Does that sound right? <laughs> Little gray things were being sucked up into this UFO. This, and, and when I say UFO, I mean just a bright, bright, bright white light. Um, brighter than bright during the daytime kind of bright. There were two of them. And I was coming back from uh, McCleary, Washington on Highway 8 when I saw this. Um, heading towards, uh, from McCleary, heading into like Olympia. Um, so, uh, right, probably before I got to, I don't remember if I was on, um, yeah, I was, it was probably before that area. Okay. So yeah, it was probably 70 miles and I saw these two brighter than bright lights in the sky thinking, yeah, you know, Mount Rainier is usually about where they start to, the airplanes will kind of turn to go up into Seattle is what I thought, you know, like it's going to, you know, these lights are going to eventually turn to the right. And they're going to be on track to land in Seattle. Well, then I start, you know, me being, uh, I mean, I'm an aviation buff. Aviation is in my family. I grew up near an airport. I, I know any military aircraft and most civilian aircraft, I can identify them by just looking at them. I know my, I know my shit when it comes to aircraft. I've worked on, uh, I was actually worked for the federal government as an aircraft maintainer. So I know a lot about aircraft. I worked on the KC-135 and the B-1B bomber. I know a lot about aircraft. And I was looking in these bright lights. All right, this is, um, I'm going, I'm traveling. Um, I look up and I see these brighter than bright lights thinking, okay, they're just airplanes on approach. They're fixing to the turn. They don't turn. I thought, well, it's been a couple minutes because they're up kind of high and, I go around a couple turns and what have you, and they're still there. And I start looking at this one, the one that was lower, it was just over the top of Mount Rainier. The other one was a little higher and a little farther north. And uh, what I perceived to be maybe a little bit farther west of where that one was too, by maybe four or five miles away. And that's just my guess. And then, so I'm looking at this one, this particularly bright white light, and it's hovering right over the, probably the south end somewhere of Mount Rainier. I'm saying you know, somewhere in the park. And it's probably three to 700 feet, maybe, maybe above the ground level where it was at. And I'm looking and I'm seeing little gray objects getting sucked up into it. They look like little miniature Tic Tacs. You know, like one after the other, just poof, 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 poof. And I thought, what the, I'm trying not to cuss. <laughs> What the bejesus is going on? And about the same time, I remember, I realized that these are definitely not aircraft. Those sucking up Tic Tacs in just that one, that's a UFO. Oh, my God, what do I do? I start to look for my phone and what have you. And this thing goes from about the, about the right in front of me in my, in my windscreen of my vehicle. And it just goes like it just headed south. And it must have went probably 50, 60 miles to the south. And when it took off, it left like a vertical, I'm sorry, a horizontal black line from originating from the center of the white dot out about, I don't know, two, 300 feet either direction of where it took off from. But it goes due south for may, maybe 50, 60 miles. And I mean fast, like choo, choo, choo. You know, just fast. I can't, I, I'm not good at the vocals, but 
So when it, it goes south and then all of a sudden it changes direction, makes 180, or I'm sorry, not 180 degrees, but uh, about, a, about, I'd say a 90 degree turn and it starts heading east but at an arc, kind of like it's going up at a, in an arc almost, but not very fast, not much of an arc, just enough. And it probably traveled another 40, 50 miles, and it went straight up vertical into the clouds and was gone. I looked for the other one. It was gone as well. I, I never saw the second one again. Um, but, yeah, that's that was absolutely a UFO. There was no airplane. There was nothing. And I had a, quite a bit of time to look at it, but a lot of the time I was looking at it, I thought, well, shit, it's just an airplane. But I'm not seeing the, you know, the flashing lights on the sides. I'm not seeing landing lights. Um, well, I'm, the white lights, I thought, were the landing lights. But then where's the, where's the flashing lights? You can see those, you know. Um, yeah. I didn't see those. And it just, it was gone. Yeah, that is interesting. And I think a lot of people today are, seeing strange things up in the skies and it's hard to say what they really are and what's going on i can definitely relate because like i said there's a lot of stuff yeah. going on around here too sure yeah if you ever want to go to greenville i'll show you with inside a, a few feet of where all this happened i will meet you there in a heartbeat oh okay. uh, yeah that sounds good and um just keep in contact and let me know if you want to meet up but yeah i appreciate you getting in contact with me through email and doing this interview yeah yeah i, I appreciate it. i had to get it out I'm, i've i've been sitting on these stories a lot of these a lot of this stuff and these ufo things have happened inside the last five to seven years and i've been sitting on a lot of that and then finally one day i just i started you know researching the bigfoots and all this and and people are People are just saying, you know, basically, you know, get it out. Tell people. Don't hide it. You know, tell tell the people that believe and get your word out. Because, and I think, it, you know, with some of the other counseling I've had to do in my past, I know that talking about it sometimes is very helpful. So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you think it's connected to the cryptid c creatures, or do you think it's separate? Um, the, the UFO that I saw? Yeah. That particular one, absolutely. That that I, I thought, well, you know what? It may be, and if it's not cryptid, it's right along the lines of um, uh, David Pollard's. Well, Pollard, I mean, Pollard. Uh, it connected yeah. to your Bigfoot encounter. Did it oh no, on no, the same what, day? Did, um... no, no, no. This is years apart, several years apart, uh, three, four years apart. Okay. Um, yeah, it's totally different. Yeah, that that was you know I just have weird shit happen and it's to the point where I think I'm I maybe since I'm I'm not an how can I put it I'm, I'm personality wise I'm more of an empath and I think I uh, I think I, I conceptualize things a little bit different than most and I think my energy attracts some of the stuff that I've been seeing in the last several years and uh, I think all of I think Bigfoot is just a big bundle of energy. One, one way, shape, or form, um, it, it's energy, um, no different than we are. So do you so think I, I, there's I, only one, or do you think they're a living, breathing creature? They're, absolutely, they're, a, they're a breeding creature. They're, they're probably, they're, they're, I guarantee you, they get, we, we don't give them enough credit for as smart as they are. I think they're more perceptual. Uh, their senses may be way more intact. I mean, not, not maybe they definitely are way more intact than ours. Mm -hmm. I think they're, the, um, I think Bigfoot is definitely more human than, 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 uh, than anything else. But I think maybe since they've been around so long, they have more powers of the mind, more links to, uh, I mean, for all I know, Bigfoot and UFO a or at least aliens, they, you know, Bigfoot, if he's, if, 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 if what I think is absolutely true, then Bigfoot's been around long enough to develop his own opinion on, uh, alien, what we would call alien. And I think that Bigfoot would probably, they'd probably get along with, uh, aliens way better than we, than, than, than a regular human would, because I think human race is probably the worst thing to ever happen to this planet. You, you don't think it's connected to your encounters though, so... Well, I think I think aliens and, and things could be could be in some stretch of the imagination. Maybe maybe the Bigfoot is actually just a bio suit for an alien. I don't know. 
No, no, no. I, but, I understand where you're getting at, but long story short, that's not what happened with your Bigfoot encounter. Because I don't want to put that in people's minds that that's what's going right. on if it wasn't associated with it. Sure. No, no, absolutely not. I don't think those those particular two were, you know, my experiences were. But there's plenty of people out there that, that, that have said that they've had some kind of paranormal or alien or UFO experience before or after their experience. So Absolutely. Yeah, and I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, I know I've I've talked your ear off. I'm sorry. I I, I can do that. I I I just yeah. No, you're fine. And well, um, it. Do you think you will continue experiencing paranormal activity and the cryptid encounters? I sure hope so. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I'm. I think uh, you know. There's there's a part of me that. You know, it, you know, one, one, I'm kicking myself in the ass for not pulling my, uh, cell phone out and, and, and trying to get a video of the Bigfoot that I saw. Cause I mean, if I would have made that right hand turn when I saw him the second time after he crossed the street, I would have had it just, I mean, I would have been 50 feet away from it with a video camera out the window, but I didn't, the day before I was literally driving around with my cell phone and my drone ready to go. Um, like all hooked up, ready to go, you know, um, yeah, that, that would have been interesting. Yeah. That would have been great to have seen that, got it on video and then got it on drone too, walking down that road. Um, like, yeah, like absolutely. it was close. Yeah. It was close to thing or close to uh, Halloween, but I'm pretty sure nobody, nobody would go through the trouble to make a suit like that and be able to walk in it with stilts and make it that big. It's, I don't, and even, even if they could have made a suit that big, so let's just say they made the torso, you know, made a, some type of a stilt from, you know, just attached to their back to raise their head up, you know, to that tall, they still couldn't have made that stride. There's no way. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you sharing all that with all of us. And if you ever come across anything else, feel free to get in contact with me. Right, right. Now, I, I think I'm, I'm going to probably invest in a in an old school camera of some kind because I don't know about the energy levels of, you know, maybe Sasquatch can see energies, you know, and maybe they they can detect somehow this technology. I don't know. That's kind of my thought. So, yeah, you have but, to uh, experiment with it. And yeah, see what works better. Don't know what, yeah, don't know what would what would happen, but anyway. So that's my, uh, that's my experience. I sure appreciate you, you know, been, you know, give me the time to bend your ear a little bit. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing it with us. And there you guys are a dog man encounter from Greenville state park. I appreciate you for coming on the show and I hope you have an excellent day, sir. All right, Miguel. I hope you have a great evening and, uh, maybe bump into you in the woods one of these days. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to keep in contact. You bet. All right. You have an excellent All right. night. All right. You too, Miguel. Take care. Yep. You too. All right, bye. All right, guys. Another strange encounter from the great state of Missouri. There's a lot of woods in southeast Missouri, and it's a great place for outdoor activities and sometimes cryptid creatures. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give the video a thumbs up and be sure to hit the bell notification. If you would like to help support the channel and the research, you can purchase some new Sasquatch Theory merchandise, and I will leave links in the description down below. Thank you everyone for watching, and take care.